Stevie Franchise. Nowadays, he's not doing so well. He's had multiple DUIs, got arrested for a public intoxication, got arrested for a hit and run incident, and despite being only 41 years old, he looks like he could be 60. However, back in the day, Francis was one of the most exciting players the NBA has ever seen. His combination of crossovers, high-flying dunks, and overall insane athleticism made him one of the most explosive point guards in history. Despite retiring at just 30 years old and being out of the NBA for over a decade, his legacy lives on. You know how pretty much every NBA draft recently has an explosive, athletic point guard? Well, most of their NBA comparisons are Steve Francis. Francis was the prototype for the modern, hyper-athletic, strong, physical point guard. How's it going ladies and gents, my name's Andy, and today let's talk about Steve Francis and how good he actually was. To start things off, Francis was drafted in 1999 by the Vancouver Grizzlies with the second overall pick. In one of the most controversial moments ever, Francis immediately declared that he did not want to play for Vancouver, so he demanded a trade. With no other choice, the Grizzlies traded him to the Rockets. Unfortunately for Vancouver, the team would relocate a year later because the organization was struggling to earn money. And now, everyone there hates Francis because he was the star that they were looking for to save the franchise. So, yeah, it wasn't a very good start to his career, but when he arrived in Houston, he instantly made an impact. In his rookie season, he averaged 18 points, 5 rebounds, and nearly 7 assists per game, even leading his team in scoring. Francis won Co-Rookie of the Year alongside Elton Brand, although the Rockets only won 34 games. Right out of the gates, Francis was incredibly exciting to watch. He had a smooth crossover, an explosive first step, and a 43-inch vertical. In terms of playstyle, he was kinda similar to Allen Iverson, but he was bigger and stronger, standing at 6'3", 200 pounds. He even averaged 2 offensive rebounds per game as a rookie, and he did that with pure athleticism. Fun fact, Francis actually played on the same team as Hakeem Olajuwon and Charles Barkley in their twilight years. Anyway, in the next few years, Francis would continue his great individual play. By his second season, he made a drastic improvement in his three-point shooting, hitting nearly 40% of his threes on over four attempts per game. He worked on his jump shot a lot over the summer, and it definitely showed. Francis would also make the All-Star team for three straight years from 2002 to 2004, but that was the highest level of success he had. The Rockets as a team were still struggling, as they continued to miss the playoffs. Even though he was a great individual player who did a bit of everything, he was one of the most erratic players in the league. His jump shot became very inconsistent, and over the years, he looked like he was just going through the motions, not really caring about winning games. Around this time, Francis was also diagnosed with Meniere's disease, a disorder that causes severe migraines, loud ringing noises in the ears, and hearing loss. This played a huge part in his declining play as well, because some days at practice, Francis said he'd be so dizzy that he'd have to go see the doctor almost every day. He also said he lost 35% of his hearing in his right ear. During the middle of a game when it's so loud, he'd have trouble hearing his coach calling out plays or his teammates asking for a pass. It was a terrible situation and combined that with a foot injury he suffered in 2002 and it was no surprise he started to go downhill. By the 2003-4 season, the Rockets hired Jeff Van Gundy as their new head coach who completely revamped the team's playstyle. Instead of running most of their plays through their guards, Van Gundy wanted to slow the game down and run the offense through Yao Ming, while Francis became more of a spot-up shooter. Looking at the results, it was best for the team, since they won 45 games and made the playoffs for the first time since Francis arrived. But he was still not happy. Statistically, he had the worst season of his career, averaging career lows in points and shooting efficiency. In fact, in February of 2004, he even skipped a team flight to watch the Super Bowl instead. According to an article published around that time, it stated, The debate about whether Francis possesses the raw talent or the instincts to be a true point guard for a contending team is one for another day. This is about being responsible, about fulfilling the most basic duties to an employer who is paying you $85 million over 6 years. This was not a youthful indiscretion, but blatant insubordination. Yeah, it was pretty clear that Francis was on his way out. In the summer of 2004, he was packaged in a blockbuster trade. 
The Rockets traded him alongside his buddy Katino Mobley to the Orlando Magic for Tracy McGrady. That was the end of the Stevie franchise era in Houston. Years later, Van Gundy was watching the 2012 Finals, the game where Russell Westbrook scored 43 points. Van Gundy was asked about whether or not he could coach him. He replied, I did coach Russell Westbrook. His name was Steve Francis. Then Van Gundy admitted, if I had one regret about my time coaching Steve Francis in Houston is I tried to change too much too soon. I think this is a great statement because Westbrook is a very similar player to Francis. The only difference was coaching. Early in his career, Westbrook got free reigns to do anything he wanted, whether it was good or bad. Scott Brooks gave him the confidence to be himself, and that's why he developed into an MVP. But Francis, on the other hand, did not have the same luxury. Van Gundy and his other coaches tried to mold him into something that he wasn't. Anyway, in his first season in Orlando, Francis had a bounce back year. The Magic played at a very fast pace, the third highest pace in the league, and Francis greatly benefited from it. Unfortunately, the 2004-5 season would be his last great season. He started to quickly decline through a combination of different things. He had some problems off the court and didn't really get along with his coaches. A couple of nagging injuries slowed him down and his athleticism started to disappear despite being just 28 years old. And overall, his mind just wasn't there. He just didn't seem interested in basketball anymore. He had a short, unspectacular stint in New York and then retired from the NBA at the age of 30. He finished his career playing in just one playoff series. So, how good was Steve Francis actually? He was pretty good. In his prime, one of the most exciting players ever, an explosive athlete who could get anywhere on the court and dunk over anybody with ease. Defensively, he was decent, but his effort on the court would fluctuate. Some games he just didn't care and didn't try, but when he did try, he was a good defender because of his physical tools. Unfortunately, the combination of things I mentioned earlier caused him to have a short career. I think he'd be really good if he played in the NBA today. Even if he didn't shoot well, any point guard who can get to the rim at will is very valuable. The average pace in the league today is also much higher than back in the 2000s, so that benefits Francis. And that's all folks, what do you guys think of Steve Francis? Let me know in the comments, thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.